Hello guys, welcome to the machine learning mindset. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can train a multi-layer perceptron network from a from scratch. Okay, let's go and get started. And here is the notebook that I provided for you. You can find the link um, to the full code in the description. And here uh, for the start, I'm just importing TensorFlow as TF. Here it is. And for the next, I am using to t I'm using TF Keras datasets MNIST to actually um, load the MNIST database, which is actually provided by the high level Keras in TensorFlow. So it's just simple. I'm using TF Keras dataset um, load MNIST with a path, and I just use the default path so I don't put an argument um, here. Here, I'm just loading the X train, Y train, X, X test, and Y test as two tuples, which is something that, you know, TF carries the SLMS returns. Then, the dynamic range of images here is from 0 to 255, and I'm changing it by this division to 0 to 1, which is the standard way of processing, you know, images. Then, I am going to show you the data type of X train and actually um, Y test is actually for um, the <clears throat> sake of showcasing I'm just going to run it again so as, as you would see um, both um, train and test have actually sort of float um, 32 uh, float 64 sorry and let me just showcase the actually labels here. Y train. Y train. The labels are U int 8. And I'm going to go ahead and showcase some of the examples. So this is the code snippet that I just provided that showcase some examples here of the database. I picked 16 examples. You can show them. I encourage you to go and try to run this code and debug the different parts of the code so you have a better idea of how this visualization works then I'm just going to move to model building I'm using the high level Keras which makes the situation very easy I'm using high level TF Keras sequential let me show you what that is here it is it's a sequential which group different layers together and here you you, you find actually more explanations on the official TensorFlow website and I'm just first flattening the input because you know the input shape input images are 28 by 28 now I'm just creating a flat vector of all those things um, so I'm basically disregarding the locality of features instead of image I'm representing them as vectors then I'm feeding that vector to the network and to a dense layer with activation relu by 256 number of neurons and then I added another layer which is the last layer which outputs the number of classes 10 which are 10 from yeah, from 0 to 9 we have 10 classes with the activation of zigmoid so as simple as that we built our model and here I'm going to compile it with Keras simply I'm using the Adam optimizer it's uh, actually a parameter that you can set by Keras the loss is TF Keras losses sparse categorical cross entropy from logics i put false so why is that so logics are actually the output without activation so now since i use the sigmoid activations i sh must use false argument here if i use true then it by default assume it doesn't have the sigmoid and it does the sigmoid by itself and it screws things up so here I'm just setting it false because by myself I'm using the sigmoid. Then I'm using the metric accuracy as simple as that. So this high level Keras makes life very easy. So for the model compile in the Keras, let me show you, it will be here, yes. So you do see that there are a couple of different actually arguments here. The optimizer I'm using Adam, the loss and metrics I used it and run eagerly. Keras gives you the functionality that you can run 
your model and compile your model with eager execution it helps you when you want to do some debugging and low level investigation but here we just run it on graph to for faster computation so we don't really need to use this one eagerly anyway so after compiling the model with model.fit we can easily train the model so the function here is model fit we have x and y input on the targets batch size number of epochs for training verbosity by default is one the callbacks and there are different couple of more options that uh, we are not actually using here for simplicity now if we run it you would see the model is training we do see the loss and accuracy going up um, from zero to <coughs> 99 percent point 56 and then in the end with with the model dot evaluate method with x test and y test we simply can calculate the evaluation accuracy percentage so you do see that caris is very handy and very abstract so with few lines of code you could run a multi-layer perceptron and have the results so probably you may wonder sometimes you want to actually use TensorFlow to, in general, of course, Keras is part of TensorFlow too, but you want to use pure TensorFlow and gradient tape and etc. to have a more customized model defining training. It will be covered in one of our advanced tutorials uh, and um, in the future, but you should know that that kind of flexibility is not necessarily something you want a lot of times because you want the flexibility when you need it. For simple model, try to avoid that kind of complexity in the code and use Keras um, as a high-level API that gives you a lot of functionalities at one place and makes life easier for you. Anyway, so that was an overview of how you can, from scratch, train a multi-layer perceptor with TensorFlow and high-level Keras. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment if you have actually any question or point of view. Thank you for watching.